What's up? Once again, it is Phil from Zade Comics, the writer and co-creator of Magic Hop, which is live now on Indiegogo in demand. And I'm just one half of the two best looking brothers in all of comics. And today we're doing a comic review. Now it is Thursday, the day after New Comic Book Day, and I, I checked my my local comic book store and didn't really find anything. I don't think I had anything that was coming up on pull today. So I thought I would continue this little series that I'm going through over the old first appearances of the mask, uh, appearing in the, the first, you know, 12 page inserts into Mayhem Magazine of 1989. Wow. Uh, Doug Mankey doing the art, John Arcudi writing the the, the the great story and uh, let's just dive right into it um, because this one is pretty fun of course it is the mask and we have this this awesome cover here of mayhem number two 1989 and uh, I you know was just gonna scroll past this but I saw once to look who actually did this and it has T vigil 89 Tim Vigil. And if you guys aren't familiar with Tim Vigil, he's a old school outlaw comics artist, the artist of Faust, uh, most notably Faust, which was a really brutal uh, R-rated comic back in the day. Um, if you guys want to know more about him, the guys over at Car Cartoonist Kayfabe have a really cool interview with Tim Vigil. He, you know, he does the the con circuits all the time. Um, and The Mask is the first uh, episode or first story in this book. And I think it's hilarious. The old school mask logo, which they dropped kind of after it was put out in Mayhem. They switched it up to, you know, the, the logo that we know that was used in the movie. Um, and then they used for years. There's those big green letters. Uh, but of course, again, if you guys haven't watched the first episode, of this little walkthrough uh, mask uh, in mayhem number one go check that out on my channel and you could you know and then pick up here where that uh, that story left off uh, so where this story begins now stanley ipkiss is fully embraced the mask and basically looks at himself as this this <laughs> kind of like a vigilante but more of at this point a crazy guy that is crossing names off of a list that kind of uh have round wronged him in the past rubbed him the wrong way and his girlfriend is getting on his back uh for you know doing these wacky things making these these weird crazy clothes he's making and uh, just sitting around watching TV, going out late at night, and she gets into an argument with him, and he goes, you know, off, flies off the handle, and is like, fine, I'm just going to take off. And she's like, but wait, where are you going? And then he just leaves. Doesn't even care. Um, and we get this awesome shot. When I saw this, when I was reading it the first time, I was like, wow, uh, he's going to a muffler place. He's going to an auto body place, because they took this scene straight from the comics and put it into the movie uh not you know not word for word scene for scene but is it same same thing apparently these these two guys have wronged stanley in the past this muffler shop and they're a bunch of crooks they're like oh we're gonna you know basically screw up this guy's car so he'll have to pay extra and look at these guys they're caricatures super super cool really lanky guy really fat guy and in the movie uh, if you guys remember they're depicted as that also you have the, you know the, the chubby guy and the lanky guy and over exaggeration you know Doug, Doug Mankey does great uh, exaggerations in this series uh, I'm loving it and as you can see you know uh, he's, he's, got, he's gonna do something with the muffler and then it cuts to a classroom where on that list up there it had this you know his teacher's name and a teacher that wronged him in the past and so he basically makes an example of her until it goes too far and it's basically to the point where he is forcing his foot down her mouth the guy is crazy but look at this art it's so cool the lettering is is great here um and the the he's letting all the kids out for class and then we get the first glimpse of an ongoing character in this series. We're gonna see a lot of him in the future, and he pops up in the 
actual movie, which is Kellaway, Lieutenant Kellaway. Uh, he's a big character here, and he is called into the muffler shop because these guys were brutally murdered. I mean, look at this one. This panel right here just is reminds me so much of that uh, Billy, Kin I think is his name, Billy Kincaid panel in Spawn, the first Spawn uh, trade storyline uh, where he is chained up and that note is stuck into his chest. And, you know, this guy's hanging from a chain. He's got a bunch of tools stuck into his head. His face is mangled. Uh, you could barely make out his face right there. And then this guy, you know, this is very morbid and gruesome. And then this one was comically done, comically killed, taking the shape, kind of like a Looney Tunes cartoon, uh, taking the shape of the actual muffler. So I'm, I'm loving this. You know, you keep that gruesome ultra violence, but still with a cartoony comedy. Uh, <laughs> the mask whistling down the block. Uh, and this 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 episode, this this issue, I should say, is basically a bunch like a montage of showing the mask kind of getting out of hand. Where you see that this ma the this character, the big head character, the mask has these extraordinary abilities, he's you know, impervious to harm, but it kind of takes over the person and, and makes them uh, do things that they wouldn't really want to do because they're wrong. Um, so it's a good depiction of that, and I just wanted to point out this part where this old lady, she can't recognize who Stanley is because she has doesn't have her glasses on, she puts them back on, he pulls off the mask, and then turns around, and then the mask sticks his tongue out at, uh, at this old lady. Um, goes and passes out, and she is kind of fed up with it, throws away the mask, and he goes crazy. Um, but only for a second, kind of puts on that he doesn't really need to, uh, need the mask anymore, but he's scheming. He says, besides, I don't need that mask, besides I've already got everyone on my list. <laughs> and later that night, he's watching, uh, TV, and this is kind of what sets her off. So he's like cheering that these muffler guys got mufflers ran down their throat and she's sick of it. You know, he says, oh, this, this SOB, so-and-so, he uh, still owes me 60 bucks and she kicks him out, breaks up with him and gets him out on the spot, <laughs> literally out the door. And uh, that is how that issue ends. I like doing these videos because they're quick and they're they're kind of good for me as a writer to see what you could do in only 12 pages in a shorter time frame shorter page count and if you guys are looking for these stories they're all collected in this mask omnibus you can go i'm sure you could order it at your local comic store i think you know i am uh, very privileged to have the availability of graham cracker comics in my area and they share comics back and forth so i was able to be like hey i want a trade of the mask a collection and they got me the two big omnibuses so you can read it that way it collects everything um this is in color this version in this book so uh, as you can see here uh, you get some great colors i'm sure i showed it off uh, already but let me know what you guys think this is you get some awesome hints of the mask movie taken from this dark horse mayhem number two and there are two more of these that i'm going to go through and review like i said they're short they're sweet uh but it keeps you you know bread crumbing along you get to learn who stanley is what the mask does to him and if he's going to get it back you know he was just kicked out so what do you guys think leave a comment below hit that like button and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications because i do uh work on some awesome streams with comic creators um and uh, it would be awesome if you guys came and stopped in live uh, thanks for watching everybody hope to see you next hey guys have you heard of magic cop this is the comic book that we're making at zade comics it is live right now on indiegogo it is that miami vice feel mixed with monsters and magic 88 pages fully colored graphic novel uh, and be sure to pick up that ash can that comes with it it's going to have a bunch of concept art and a 12 page pilot issue so check it out we're fully funded that means if you back it you're definitely going to get this book and we're heading on for the stretch goals so help us out to get there thanks everybody 
Did you guys know that Brandon Diaz, the artist of Magic Cop, has his very own Patreon page? You guys can head on over there and pledge for either five or eight bucks a month, and you get these beautiful digitally painted pictures by Brandon. He does one a week for all of his members. So head on over there, check it out.